Do you ever feel like you have multiple personalities in one month? You felt great last week, energized, uplifted, genuinely like you could take over the world. And then suddenly you feel like the exact opposite. Lethargic, fatigued, irritable, emotional. But you can't quite understand why this is. You've noticed that this is a regular occurrence, almost cyclical. Well, it's not you, it's hormones. This is the beautiful process that occurs as a response to hormonal changes during the menstrual cycle. So let's talk about it, the menstrual cycle and its impact on our mood and energy levels and so much more. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm Dr. Aziza Sisse. The menstrual cycle is a natural monthly process which involves a series of physiological changes in the body aimed at preparing for potential pregnancy. It's measured as the first day of your period to the day before your next period, and it typically lasts around 28 days, but it can vary from person to person, ranging from 21 to 35 days or even longer. And the length can also vary on an individual level, and it can be influenced by various factors, such as stress, illness, hormonal imbalances, and age. It's made up of four phases, the menstrual phase, the follicular phase, ovulation, and the luteal phase. Now, during the cycle, there are a series of hormonal changes which occur and impact different areas of the body. These can lead to alterations in our mood and energy levels, and how our body responds to these changes will influence how it will impact us. It's important to remember that everybody's different. Symptoms can vary, and for some individuals, they may not notice much change during the cycle at all. But I do want to emphasize here that while some discomfort and mood changes can be normal, if they're severe and disruptive affecting your daily life, then it's important to please see your doctor for an assessment, support, and guidance. Conditions such as premenstrual dysphoric disorder, PMDD, endometriosis, and adenomyosis can all be factors. The cycle begins at menstruation, and this is what we call a period, where bleeding occurs and typically lasts between two to seven days Pause. Listen, if you bleed longer than this, it is not normal. Please see your doctor so we can do some assessments to rule out any underlying cause. And remember that just because it runs in the family doesn't mean that that's normal. Okay, back to menstruation. This is where the lining of the womb sheds and comes out through the vagina as period blood. The reason that periods occur in the first place is because there's a significant drop in sex hormones, estrogen and progesterone. And this drop contributes to why we initially feel lethargic and down in the first few days of the cycle. We also experience period cramp-like pains because of another hormone, prostaglandins, which are released by the womb lining in response to the hormonal changes. Now, this hormone causes the muscle layer of the womb to contract to help it shed its lining. And the release of prostaglandins is a normal part of the menstrual cycle and contributes to the process of menstruation. In some people, higher levels of this hormone can be associated with increased womb contractions, which lead to intense, severe, and debilitating cramping and discomfort. Now, as part of the follicular phase, which also starts on day one of the cycle, there are other changes occurring at the same time. We have an increase in a hormone called follicle-stimulating hormone, FSH, which is released by a gland in the brain called the pituitary gland. And it literally does what it's called. It stimulates the follicles in the ovaries to mature into an egg. And these follicles in turn secrete estrogen, which acts on different areas of the body. On the womb, it causes the lining to thicken in preparation for potential pregnancy. Estrogen also has a strong effect on our mood, sex, and energy level. And the higher it is, the better for our mood and energy levels and sex drive. And this is because it has an impact on our central nervous system and affects the release of chemicals such as serotonin, the happy hormone, dopamine, the feel-good hormone. And this is why in the middle of our cycle, when estrogen is at its highest, it's often the most feel-good, productive, highly energized phase. And it's definitely the time to get things done. Now, at the middle of the cycle, the rise in estrogen triggers the pituitary gland in the brain to release a hormone called luteinizing hormone, LH. And this hormone surge leads to the release of a mature egg, which is known as ovulation. 
and this often happens around day 14, but the time of ovulation can range between day 9 to 17, and the time it occurs can vary from person to person, and it may vary month to month in the same individual. In this phase of the cycle, the release egg moves down the fallopian tube into the womb to potentially meet the sperm for fertilization to occur, and then implantation onto the thickened womb lining. Pause. Once released, an egg typically lives for around 12 to 24 hours and sperm can live up to five days. So it's very important that you're aware of your cycle to plan pregnancies and avoid unplanned pregnancies. Also, we tend to have heightened sex drive at this phase of the cycle because of the hormonal changes and nature's way of trying to get us pregnant. The fourth and final phase of the cycle is known as the luteal phase. Here, there's an initial drop in estrogen levels and a rise in progesterone levels. Once the egg has been released, what remains becomes a structure called the corpus luteum. This releases progesterone and some estrogen. Progesterone can have mood-altering effects. Some individuals, they may experience symptoms like mood swings, irritability, anxiety, or even depression during this phase for this very reason. Also, the initial drop in estrogen can have similar effects. Progesterone keeps the body prepared for pregnancy by maintaining the womb lining, keeping the cervical mucus thick to prevent more sperm from coming in, in the hope that fertilization has already occurred, and reducing any womb contractions which could interfere with implantation. Now, if pregnancy does not occur, the corpus luteum degenerates and the hormonal levels drop, leading to the shedding of the womb lining and the start of a new menstrual cycle. And so the cycle continues. This was a short whistle-stop overview on the menstrual cycle to familiarize yourself with the basics and why certain changes happen to your mood, energy level, and overall well-being during your cycle. What's most important to remember in all of this is understanding your own cycle, what's normal for you. It also helps if your partner and loved ones understood this too for more support and compassion. So share this. As I mentioned earlier, everybody's cycle is different and the effects during it varies depending on the individual. However, if you're experiencing symptoms that are debilitating and disrupting your life, please seek support and guidance from your doctor. There are underlying conditions that could contribute and there are treatments and help out there. Please don't suffer in silence. Did you find this useful? Please be sure to like and comment and subscribe so you can watch more of these type of videos in this style. Let's make learning fun and remember it is never too late to learn.